All right, guys, welcome everybody. My name is Erica Gonzalez. I am currently your one star double platinum. I am the with Rising Tide and I am the team leader of Team Unstoppables. Today, we're going to go ahead and go over um, some information about Disney, how to go ahead and do mock bookings and how to go ahead and do, uh, you know, an actual booking. It's pretty much all the same. The only thing is just an extra page to go ahead and actually fulfill a whole booking. We'll go ahead and go over all of that and plus some tips and tricks as well that you guys might not have known also. All right. So we're going to go ahead and make sure you guys sign up. And this is our travel, you know, our Disney sites. If you guys have not created an account, please do so. Uh, make sure you go into your back office to get that information on here, create an account. But otherwise than that, um, you guys should get uh, be able to go ahead and log in. All right. On here, I know it might look like a little bit, like a lot, a little bit too much sometimes, but I'm going to go ahead and go briefly over some information so like that it can make it easier for you guys. Okay. So first off, uh, as you guys can go ahead and see this se section right here, if you guys click on it, you will see some information under there. Okay. You will go ahead and see um, the resorts. You're going to go ahead and see Disney World, Disneyland. You're going to see the good neighbors. You're going to see cruises, Olani. If tickets alone, guys, we are able to book tickets alone also through our site. The only difference is that it has to be more than three days, though. Okay, if it's a one day, two days, you guys have to go ahead and go through Vax, Expedia, Viator, other sources to go ahead and get this. If it's three days or more, and this is just the tickets, not with the hotel, not the with not with the resort. Okay, if it's more than three days, then you guys are able to go through here, so you guys are able to get that commission. All right. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that we have um, Disney. Right, we're gonna go ahead and do Disney uh, World. All right, so for those, um, I'm gonna ask for some interaction here as well. For those, do you guys know the difference between Disney World and Disneyland? Put it in the chat box if you guys know the difference between it. Okay. Yes, okay, good, Donna. Once in Florida, California, World is Florida, Land is California. Awesome, the location, yes, that is one of them. Yes, okay. What what is the difference? Okay, Orlando and on an a ham <laughs> and a ham size. Yes. Um, location, yes, Florida, California. Correct. Uh, you, yes, land is smaller, correct. World is way bigger than land. Of course, <laughs> the amount of rights and places to stay, land was created first, correct. All of these are correct, guys. Yes, good job. So pretty much, um, yes, that is correct. Just the pet on the ham. Yeah, that's okay. I couldn't say it either. <laughs> All right. So um, pretty much just like you guys know, right, specifically, you know, certain stuff about Disney, that does not mean that your client knows that information. Okay. So please make sure that you are aware that your client knows this information before you guys go ahead and start looking for this. Okay. Because if you guys go ahead and let's just say your client says, hey, I want to go to Disneyland. And you guys are like, awesome. Let's go ahead and set this up. You go ahead and go through the process. And then at the end, they tell you, well, I want to go. Uh, when am I going to go to Magic Kingdom? And you're just like, wait, what? <laughs> what happened there? That's in two different locations. You know, animal, you know, Magic Kingdom is a one Florida and the other one's in California, right? So you guys want to make sure you guys do not waste your time trying to figure out something when in their heads, they're looking at something else. All right. Because believe me, when I started this, I did have people that say, I want to go to Disneyland, Disneyland. And. I would go through the process and then I find out that they actually want to go to Florida when it's Disney World. So some people don't know the difference. They just know it's Disney and they'll ask you too, well, what's the difference, right? Well, one's Disneyland, one's Disney World, one's in California, one's in Florida, one's bigger, one's smaller. You know, um, one takes you what, four, five, six a week to go ahead and do. One takes like you two or three days to go ahead and do, right? So make sure you guys give this information as well to your clients, all right? Because yes, we, we know right? I've had some agents on here that are like, they don't know the difference. Okay. Just because you think you might know does not mean your client might know as well. So if you guys are actually also have my like train, um, for those that know and have done my training, do you know, I love my link tree, right? Okay. So for link tree, I have my Disney quote on here as well. So on my Disney quote, Okay, on my Disney quote, I do have that information for them. So like that one night, they, I, when this location is on here, you see how it says what Disney location? I actually put Disneyland, California, Disney World, Florida, because a lot of people get those two confused, okay? Just because they say Disney World does not automatically mean they, they're thinking about Florida. I always have to correct them and make sure it's correct. So if you guys are doing a quote like this, I would recommend for you guys to go ahead and make sure you put this information on there, okay? All right. And um, of course, 
I, I'm going to go ahead and share this uh, with you as I'm going along to like that you guys are able to see that, you know, certain stuff that I ask in my quote for Disney specifically is for what I'm going ahead and going through this as well. All right. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and do, like I said, Disney World. When you're doing a mock booking, do you guys know, or just in general, not just mock bookings, do you, for those that are my Disney people on here <laughs> and those that are not, that's perfectly fine. Do you guys know when the cheapest time to go to Disney is? Put it in the chat box. Do you guys know when the cheapest time to go is? No, no, during school year. Yes, Josh, that's one of them. Weekends, weekdays, oh, weekdays. <laughs> it kind of depends. Donna says fall, yes. Megan says, I don't. Winter, yes, Kathy, that's one of them too. Um, week. Days is also a good one, yes. Uh, August around the 22nd, yes, Vicky. When school is in like February is, well, yeah, when school is in in general. <laughs> good job, all right. So the majority of you that put, that you guys kind of know is kind of true, all right? So usually you will hear people say, when's the cheapest time to go? Okay, I guarantee you, you're gonna get asked that, right? Because <laughs> all of the ones I've done have always told me, when's the cheapest time to go? In reality, guys, the cheapest time to go is when there's school right? It's when there's school, when kids are in school, because, you know, everything comes down, right? It's supply and demand. So when kids are off vacation, especially uh, any holidays, everything goes up. Why? Because people are going to go regardless of the price. So since they want to go ahead and fill in more of their stuff, right? That's why they lower their prices. And that's during the time that kids are in school. And also at the beginning, which would be during uh, um, when school starts, which is usually the end of August, beginning of September, depending on the location where you guys are at, and or February and January are usually the cheapest times to go, okay? Um, those are the cheapest times that you guys are able to go ahead and attend. And when you guys know these cheaper times to do, when you guys are doing mock bookings, that's when you guys wanna go ahead and look into those days, right? You don't wanna go ahead and book something in during summer. When you want to promote, you want to promote the cheapest stuff first, because that's going to grab people's attention. Does that make sense to everybody? Does everybody know that that uh, to book Disney is a $200 down payment? Who did not know that? No, yes, me, 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 as in me, you did not know? No, I did not. Me, I, the ones that are saying me, me means I did not know. Okay, there you go. Did not know. <laughs> All right. Nancy, no, me, all right, did not know. All right, guys, and guess what? In my little quote, that's one of my big ones too. I tell them that, did you know the with only $200, you can book your dream vacation with Disney, right? So, and and I have this with, my, with a lot of my mock booking flyers too. I advertise the $200 down, and I'll show you guys that later on. Hopefully, I do have time for that, but I'll show you guys how that looks as well because you want to grab their attention for those $200, because just like that, that you guys don't know, you guys, um, Disney World, um, I think Disneyland does too. I'm not 100% sure because I haven't done Disneyland, uh, but Disney World does have the $200 down. And did you guys know you guys are able to do payment plans? Boom. Who didn't know that? I did. Josh knew. Okay. So did not know. Nope. Did not know. I did. I did not know. I didn't. I didn't. There's a lot. You see? All of you, the majority of you did not know. <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and go over that as well. All right, so um, make sure that's going to be towards the end as well, um, that I'll go ahead and show you how to be able to go ahead and do those payment plans that we are able to provide as well. All right, so you see all of this little nuggets and little stuff that you guys didn't know. You guys are able to also let your clientele know this. All right. If you guys need to go ahead and make like a little flyer, if you guys want to do a video, right? If you guys want to go ahead and do this stuff, guys, people like informational stuff. All right. If you guys are not in TikTok, you guys should be on TikTok giving people information. All right. Not giving just slideshows. No, no. <laughs> Those do not hit. People like information. So by you going on there right now and doing a TikTok and saying, did he know that it's only $200 down to go ahead and book your dream vacation? Do you think people are going to reach out to you? Uh, yeah, <laughs> especially when people try to do this on their own and they see that it comes to be like five grand or 10 grand when you can do it for like maybe two grand, right? A lot of these little hacks and things, you're, you're going to go ahead and see the reason why it's so much too, okay? So let's go ahead and go ahead and get started on here that we're going to go ahead and just for now, we're going to go ahead and say we're going to go on the 28th through September 1st, right? We're doing a mock booking, guys, okay? 
Um, we want to know how many adults and how many children. Reason with children is we want to know their ages. Okay, so instead of asking how many children and how, what are their ages? What you guys can go ahead and do automatically is be like, how old are your children? Why? Because that right there is telling you that if they say, oh, one's five and one's seven, that means they have two children, right? So you don't need to go ahead and ask how many children. And then they tell you two. And then you tell them, what are the ages? And then they tell you how many, okay? That's like an extra question you don't need to ask, right? So just, you know, hopefully all of us know how to do math. <laughs> all right, so... Reason being, we also need the ages of the children is because anybody pretty much from a one day old all the way to a two year old go in for free. They do not need a ticket. Okay. It's for free. They go in for free. They're still considered a child, but you, they, they're not charging for them. Okay. So when I do mock bookings, I always put an infant in there, right? I put somebody that is free because in reality, it's still a child, but it's not, it lowers the price in other words. And that's what we want, right? Um, because we want to bring in the people to give them that quote. And um, so anybody from an infant to a two-year-old is free. Anybody from three, I think, till nine years old is one price mark. And from 10 to 17 is another price mark. That's the reason they're asking you for this information. So again, I want to do something, you know, in the lower end, because again, I just want to do the quote. And then we're just going to go ahead and go to find prices. These are the only three things you guys need. Just these three things. Once you do that, you're going to go ahead and go to the hotel section, the resorts, right? Depending um, on how you guys go ahead and go about that. Now, guys, if I go ahead and ask you, this is, this is not Disney, just in general. If I go ahead and ask you, hey, I found you a cheap hotel. What are you guys gonna think? What's the first thing that pops into your mind when I say cheap hotel? Loosely, Motel 6, trashy, okay, okay. Bed bugs. <laughs> no, gross. All right. Bad quality, Super 8. Okay, so we have Super 8 and Motel 6. <laughs> All right. So usually the first thing that comes to your mind when you say cheap, you get all of these, all of these interactions, right? Like the first place it goes to, it's like, ew, cockroaches, ew, it's nasty, ew, all of this stuff, right? Because we've already seen it and we're just like, ooh, especially those bed bugs, right? Right, Kathy? <laughs> um, and the reason I bring this up, guys, is because you guys need to be careful on how do you word your information, okay? Say value, yes. So you wanna make sure you go ahead and be specific or careful with what you say. With that being said, when you wanna go ahead and find something, whoops, hold on. Okay, sorry about that, thought it was for me. <laughs> um, one, when you go ahead and um, look for something and you tell the client, hey, I found you this, right? You're not going to say, I found you a cheap resort. No, you're going to say, hey, I found you a family-friendly resort or a budget-friendly resort. Or um, you don't want to say inexpensive because that kind of sounds like cheap, right? A great deal. There you go, Stephanie. Used a great deal out of it, right? Now, again, depending on their, their location, right? Whatever they want. And this is where people kind of mess up a lot because they go ahead and do either moderate or they do deluxe or they do deluxe villas, all right? Um, what happens here is that if you guys go ahead and if, when people look, right? When people look for a resort, they go with the fanciest looking place they, they can go ahead and get, right? If the pool has 10 pools, if there's like magic, like, you know, Disney magic all the way around the, the, the room, all that good stuff, right? Because I know I did when I first did this. Okay, can you say affordable? Yes, you can say affordable. Yes, of course. Um, just don't say cheap, <laughs> right? Because cheap is not, you already saw what other people thought when you saw it, when you say cheap, right? So what you wanna go ahead and do on here is you wanna make sure that you guys use the correct verbiage. Whichever one you guys end up using, just don't say cheap, okay? Um, so are you saying for every booking, you automatically add a free infant or just for families with children? Um, I'm just doing a mock booking, Kendra. Okay, that's when I do a mock booking, I do uh, an infant, okay? Um, now, for those, then this is where I did the mistake when I, prior to being um, a, a travel agent, okay? Because you guys just more than likely, right? Look for, make sure that the hotel is nice, see how many pools it has, because I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of all the pools while I'm there, right? Now, <laughs> that's a lot, right? So the thing is, the more you go ahead and go, right? Like you wanna go ahead and have that, deluxe villa, right? Where the, where you open the windows and you see the castle, th those are like the best ones, right? 
um, where you, you can reach out and touch the castle. Not that there is, I'm just saying. Those, those are the ones that take like your soul, your leg and your hand and everything. That's, you're just selling everything that because that's how expensive that is. And a lot of people, when they search for that, they search for, okay, the closest place to be in the, the castle, the closest to be like, if you're in the animal kingdom, you want to go ahead and feed those giraffes, right? Of course, they're going to be more expensive. So a lot of people don't realize that. For those that have gone to Disney, their first time, I'm saying the first time, not saying like they're a hundred times. <laughs> for those that have gone to Disney, do you guys stay inside the resort? Tell me yes or no in the chat box. Do you guys stay inside the resort when you, the first time you've ever gone? No, no, never been. Oh, <gasps> Josh, you've never been. Leah says, I do not. Donna says, no. Um, Stephanie says, no. Somebody said yes. Mina says, yes, usually Disney Springs. Okay, well, Disney Springs is not the, the hotel though, Stephanie. Never been, never stayed overnight. Okay, Pop Century is our favorite for value. Okay, never been. Oh, no, no, only my universe, anniversary once. Vacation homes, I want to, but haven't. No, stayed with family. No, have not had to drive to Disney. Ooh, the drive is horrible. <laughs> All right. Well, for those that stay, the majority and the majority of us that, that have gone, especially if it's your first time, if I am spending about a hundred and some dollars, a hundred and fifty dollars to two hundred and something dollars, believe me, I am not staying inside the resort. Okay. I am not staying inside the resort. I am going to be there until rope drops before rope drops until it closes down because i did not just pay a whole bunch of money just to be there half a day and just go back to the hotel the resort right sleep and shower only when at disney correct joanne that's the only time you go ahead and do it all right if for those that don't do that well um yeah that's cool <laughs> but um you know the, the real ones go ahead and go there from the time they get up which is like at six five six in the morning all the way until closing as well all right but of course we have those people that have their children and stuff like that which we understand right but the majority of the time you do you guys do not stay in the resort only to shower and sleep right with that being said too guys that means that you don't want to go ahead and go to these fancy hotels right even though they're beautiful and nice and spend 427 dollars when they can go ahead and spend hundred and thirty three dollars you see the difference right there that's a big difference right there from going to uh you know going from um going from like a deluxe to a villa or going from a moderate to a villa a value i'm sorry moderate to value all right so even though and we can say cheap within ourselves because you know we're using the cheap word right now because we we are all we know what we're talking about right? You want to go ahead and let your clients know that you find them a better deal. Okay. If you guys go ahead and do these, right? The only difference with it, it's still magical for those that have gone to all stars. Do you guys still think there's still some Disney in there or there's no Disney feeling at all? Because I know when I went to the all-star movies, I like the all-stars and I've stayed at the all-stars, the all-star movies. I still have that magic in there. Okay. Even though it's cheap, I still have that magic in there. Still Disney. Exactly. Right. You still have Disney in there. It's still Disney, even though it's cheap. Okay. The only difference is that you guys, if anything, the rooms are a little bit smaller. And in reality, if you guys are not really staying on there, I mean, you're still able to walk and move and it's not like you're crunched up. Right. But the only thing is just the rooms. Right. And a lot of the stuff inside, there's not a lot of Disney stuff inside, but it, I mean, outside of the, the, the room, you'll see all of this Disney stuff. So you'll still have some magical stuff in there. It's not going to be like the other rooms, like the art and all of that, right? The resorts where it's like completely from top to bottom Disney, okay? But again, you're trying to help, especially when they're new, new first time goings, you want to save them money. So you, in reality, you can save them those $300. Remember, because it's like 133 to compared to 400 and something. That $300, can go ahead and go towards their food because remember they're not they're no longer doing the the what is it the dining plan right because they have to pay for their food now um they can do you use it for souvenirs they can use it for other stuff all right so that's why you want to give them these options and let them know right and usually when they see that th these are the cheaper ones um and by you explaining to them hey if you go this route you're saving this amount compared to going to this route and you're going to pay this amount Okay, that's why a lot of this stuff is doable because people don't automatically go to these. People go to 
the one where you open, you know, the, the curtain and you see the, ma the castle. They go to the one that has the villas. Which one is it? We have the valley, which is basic and family friendly. You have the moderate, which is mid-level. You have deluxe, which is the luxury, right? And then you have the deluxe villa, which is the highest level of luxury and amenities for families without a budget. So if your family does not have a budget, hey, take me. <laughs> Those are the deluxe villas, right? But when it's, there's a budget and they're really tight on that budget, that's where the value comes in, all right? Um, so that's just kind of um, something you guys can go ahead and let your clients know, right? So in this case, we're just gonna go ahead and do the all-stars. And again, this is the same process as doing an actual booking. Mock booking and a regular booking are the exact same thing. The only difference is gonna be just that extra um, page at the end, okay? And then we'll go over that as well. On here, you're going to go ahead and see any specials going on. In this case, they say the stay, play, and enjoy Disney Dining promo card, all right? In this case, I'm not going to show you the special offers, but the standard, because not all the time are, are special offers available, but you'll be able to see anything that is going on, like if they have Disney Plus, if they have the Disney card, um, if they're Florida residents, any of that stuff, you guys will be able to go ahead and see in this area, okay? Um, after that, what you guys are going to do, we're going to go ahead and do the standard room. Right, because again, I'm doing everything cheap, so this is mock booking wise. Unless it's a real quote, then of course, um, they're gonna go ahead and show you everything on there. Okay, now on here, that's it. But do not tell your client, oh my god, it's five hundred and thirty-four dollars to go ahead and be able to go from August twenty-eighth to September first. Let's go, because you guys have not added the tickets yet. All right, because if you tell your client it's five hundred, oh yeah, they're gonna be on it. They're going to be like, here you go. But then if you're like, um, yeah, um, the thing is that I forgot to add the tickets. They're not going to be happy, right? So make sure you do not jump the gun. So make sure you go ahead and go to the ticket options. It's automatically going to give you the amount of tickets that they're staying. So if they're staying five days, it's going to give you five day tickets. If they're staying there 20 days, if they're staying there 10 days, it's going to give you the amount of tickets that they're staying. Don't worry. You guys are able to make the adjustments on it. All right, so let's just say they want to do three days. I don't recommend anything that is one day or two days, guys, okay? Because we know that Disney World, right? Disney World takes more than pretty much two days to explore everything. If it's their first time, especially, you do not want to let them do the two days because I get a lot of people are like, well, I want to do the two days with the park hopper. No, no. For those that have gone to Disney, how long does it take? How many days do you think is a good amount of days to go as a first timer? Is one day good enough to go ahead and do all the parks? Is two, three, okay, four, five, three, seven to nine days. <laughs> yes, Vicky, I like you. <laughs> a day a park. Okay, Josh, yeah, that's, that's good. Mina says eight, three minimum with no kids. <laughs> yes, okay, that works too. Uh, give time to relax and recharge at the pool. Okay, yes, but they're at right now. We're doing the tickets, not the amount of days. Okay, but you still want to give that information too with them, Vicky. Okay, depends on their interest. Okay, depends on their interest too. But if it's their first time going, you want to make sure that they get the experience of Disney because a lot of people are like, oh, okay, well, Disney's overrated. For some people, it is because they cannot find the true magic, right, uh, in it. Because they're like, okay, I'm here. <laughs> okay, this is it. All right, all right, let's go to the next part, right? They don't enjoy it. They don't look for what we're supposed to be looking for. People that like Disney and people that don't, and they're just going just because people know Disney, right? That's two different things. But normally, if especially they want the park hopper, right? And it's their first time, I do not recommend the park hopper. And I recommend at least three days, minimum, all right? It's like cruise people and not cruise people. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> All right. So minimum three days. Yes, you want to add, like, for example, those five days, like, like Vicky had said, you want to add those extra, you know, when you get there, when you leave, have that extra time in there. Because if they, if you're going for five days, they're going to be like, give me five tickets for those five days. That's a big no-no too, right? Especially if it's their first time because they need time to recover. Am I right, guys? You need that recovery time because then you're just like, ah, <laughs> right? I, I mean, that's that's me. I, I go, I relax my first day. I'm there for the next seven, eight days. And then my ninth day, I relax too, okay? 
So um, why not the park hopper? Because the park hopper does not get you to enjoy the full park, all right? For those that have been to animal, for those that have been to Magic Kingdom, how long do you think it takes you to go ahead and see the whole Magic Kingdom? The whole experience. Do you, would you say one day? Two days, thank you, Donna, yes. All right, so we only have one person that's a two days. <laughs> um, four days, Mina, four days, oh my goodness. <laughs> iPhone says two days, all right. So you see guys, some of you guys, just the Magic Kingdom alone can take up to two to four days just to watch, see one park, all right? So if you're doing the park hopper, park hopper, if you have the park hopper and it's their first time, do you think half a day they will get the experience? Any experience at all besides seeing the, the castle itself? Put yes or no in the chat. Nah, no, no. There you go. No, no. The park hopper is for half a day. After two o'clock, that's when you can go ahead and start park hopping. So if you guys, for those that are putting no, there you go. You cannot do a full park in half a day unless you're more experienced and that's different right because i'm not saying experienced people i'm just saying very first timers okay if you do a park copper do you encourage three day park copper or two regular and one day park copper i do not ask them for any park hoppers me personally i do not tell them park copper is a good idea if it's their first time as you guys can see people are telling you no right off the bat, okay? Because you cannot get a full experience with half a day at a park, all right? If you guys wanna do it, that's perfectly fine, okay? That's perfectly fine. If they wanna do it, that's perfectly fine. But you as an advisor are advising your clients about this, okay? I advise my client, hey, they tell me, oh, I wanna go for two days, ooh, ooh no. No, right? How many parks are there at Disney? Four parks, okay? Four normal parks, yes. Four big parks, yes. In total though, how many parks are there? Do you guys know? Yes, Vicky, thank you. Four dry and two water. You want them to have a good experience at the park? Yes, because you don't want them to come back and be like, oh my God, that was just a waste of time. I just spent $240 on the park hopper and it was not worth it. Do you guys really want to hear that? You want to have bad experience of your client? No, you don't, right? Four at water, two at land. Four at world. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, read that wrong. Yes. So Disney World has four parks, but has two water parks and has one ESPN. Okay. So in reality, the four big popular ones is Disney World, is Disneyland, is <laughs> Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, Epcot, and Hollywood Studios right? Those are the four big ones besides the two, the other ones. All right. So you want to make sure is park hopper good for three days. I do not recommend the park hopper. Okay. I do not recommend it. If they decide to do it, that's perfectly fine. I'll go ahead and charge it. But if I do not let them know and don't let them and tell them, Hey, if the park hopper, there's four days, if you go ahead and do, that's pretty much half a day apart. And you guys, when I just asked right now, does Magic Kingdom, half a day. Do you think you'll get the experience? You just saw a whole bunch of people say no. So in reality, you are just spending another extra $240 technically to not get the full experience, All right? But of course you let the client know if they still wanna do it, hey, I let you know. If they get mad, they're not gonna get mad at you. They're gonna get mad at themselves because hey, I just wasted $240 on something I didn't need, All right? And then at two o'clock, that's when they can start and they can go to another park and the thing is that if they go to another park, if that park closes early for whatever reason, because we know that sometimes they close early, right? They might close at six or close at seven, two, three, four, five, six. That's probably like four or five hours that they had to experience the next park. So that's even less time than the from the rope drop to two o'clock. Does that make sense? Okay. That's the reason I personally don't recommend the park hopper. And again, this is just for my first timers. 
if they, they've been there several times or if they know their way, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, do the park hopper because they already know maybe they want to do, you know, want to go to Animal Kingdom, but at the end of the day, they want to go ahead and watch the, the fireworks at uh, Magic Kingdom, right? That's perfectly fine because they already know what they're wanting to do. But for first timers, I don't recommend it. All right. Again, that's just perfectly me. You, for those that have experience, you guys know what Disney does, what it gives, how long it takes. And for you, you know, don't always go with what the client wants. Educate them. All right. And if at that point, if they still want to do it, that's perfectly fine. All right. And of course, you see here, if I add the park hopper, it goes up $240. The water parks, we have the water parks again with the sports option, which is $240 as well. If you add all of these two, that's what it's called the park hopper plus. Meaning that you have the water park, you have the sports option, plus you have the availability to do the park hopper. So it's these two combined, which would be $303, all right? But for now, since I'm doing everything basic, right? Because I want the cheapest thing for now, I'm doing just the basic package. And of course, I'm gonna go ahead and continue. The Genie Plus, before we were able to go ahead and do it, we no longer can do it. They have to go ahead and do it themselves with the app, all right? For that being said too, you guys do know that you guys need to reserve each park, yes? Is there anybody that did not know that they needed to go ahead and reserve this? Okay, no, I didn't, no, I did not. I did not, I did not know. Wow, you guys did not know. Okay, my last training, everybody was like, yes. <laughs> and this one is like, no. <laughs> All right, no problem. Yes, guys, I am the Disney World part of Disney training. I am on a Disney World part of Disney. Oh, okay. How did you reserve? I learned this the other day. I did not. Is this new? It is new, but it's not new. It, this has been happening since COVID, all right, due to the fact that it's only limited to a certain amount of people. Now, guys, I can go ahead and guarantee you that even though they purchased the tickets, okay, even though they purchased the tickets and they do not reserve, ooh, those are going to be very mad people <laughs> because they will not be let in. All right. And I can tell you that because I am in so many Disney and Facebook groups that I see like every hour or so people pissed off because they did not let them in. So you can holler, you can cry, you can shout, you can speak to a manager, you can do whatever you want, but they will not let you in because they have reached their capacity of people to join. And you can tell them, hey, I purchased the tickets. They do not care. All right. Now, let's just say that Okay, you you can't go into let's just say man, man, animal, Magic Kingdom because usually Magic Kingdom is the first one to get filled up, right? And you try to go to Animal Kingdom, and they're filled up too. So guess what? Now you have to have two other ones, and if they're filled up, guess what? Now you can't do anything that day, so you just lost the ticket. All right. So it's very very important that you guys know that once you book, as you guys can go ahead and see. Once you know this pops up, this is what it's telling you: reservation required for park entry. It's telling you, you cannot say, I did not know. Well, I mean, right now you guys can say that, right? <laughs> but um, once you actually go through this process, right? Once you go in there, book it for your client, do whatever. You cannot say, you guys did not know. There's so much information. Yes, there is. All right. You have to let your client know as well. This, you're going to go ahead and reserve with the, the app. Okay. They can go ahead and reserve with the app. Um, the Disney app, Disney experience, I believe it's called Disney experience. It's, it's the, the one that you can look into and see like the, the times <laughs> also like how long the wait is and all of that. I don't know. If there's some Disney, um, people on here that have seen, oh, you know, the wait time and they're not even at Disney world. You know what I mean? That's, that's the Disney app. Okay. Now the thing with that is that you have the choice. If you want to be very, very extra nice, right? If you want to be like the little pixie dusks of, of people, you guys are able to go ahead and reserve this for them. How do I do that? You guys, once you go ahead and do this, and this is already, I know it, it's kind of in the line of mock booking. This is not the mock booking part, but I'm, it's kind of like in the booking section. Once you go ahead and get reserved, you will get the confirmation number. Once you get the confirmation number, that's how you're going to go ahead and set it up with the account. All right, that's how you set it up with the account. So you guys are able to download it, download the app, right? The, the Disney experience, download it. You're gonna create an account so you can create it for them. Like they're, you're gonna need their email, which you should have with the credit card authorization form, right? You are gonna create an email and then you're gonna create a password. 
the password can be like vacation 2023, magical, whatever, whatever you guys want to go ahead and do. All right. Once you do that, you're going to connect it with the reservation and that's how it's going to connect to them so they can know who they are. Once you're there, you have to reserve how many days are going to stay there. If they have a three day park ticket, reserve Animal Kingdom, Magic Kingdom and Epcot, let's just say, right? Those three and they're reserved already. The sooner you're able to do this, the better it is. Do not, I repeat, do not wait to the last minute because if you do, more than likely, they will go ahead and be filled, right? If the client waits until that day and is like, well, I want to go to Animal Kingdom today and they go ahead and go into their app, they're not going to be able to do that. And if they can, once they go ahead and arrive, they're probably going to let them know that they can't, okay? So that's why it's very, very important to reserve ASAP. Does that make sense to everybody? Excuse me. Um, is this through the navigation app? Um, no, it's the, the Disney experience. Okay, you guys are able to look into your app and look into Disney and you should see some of them and it should say the Disney experience. Um, I think for right now, it looks like, what does it look like? It has a big 50 on there. It has a big 50 and then the zero, it has uh, Mickey on there. So that's the app for it. Okay. So Erica, um, when you say that we can use the Disney Experience app, I mean, I've used it for my own trips, but is there a separate way to log in to do a booking for a client on there? That's what I'm confused about. You just log out. And when you log back in, you just use their information. So they're going to give me their information? That's why you will do it for them. Okay. All right. I so, guess I need so, to. I'm, I'm, uh, because if it's their first time, especially, they don't have a Disney app. Right. So, so I'm you're making it for Disney, them. I'm creating a Disney app. Okay. For them. Log yes. For them. So then you give them the information. Hey, I created a Disney app. Make sure you download this. Make sure this is your username. This is your uh, password. And this is what your reservation is reserved for all these three parks. Let me know if you need to change them, whatever, or unless you guys have been communicating to be, I want to do Magic Kingdom the first day, Animal Kingdom the second day. You know what I mean? then that's where you're creating that for them. If okay. they do not want to give you access, if they're like, right. no, I'll do it. That's perfectly fine. Now you just have to let them know. You have to make sure you reserve these ASAP because now is, if it's on them, they can't right. come back at you and be like, well, you never told me. Well, no, I was going to do it for you. You know what I mean? Right. Thanks. Okay. So that's you, you, you guys will keep on seeing this over and over again if you guys end up leaving this. Okay. It's going to remind you over and over again. So again, <laughs> you guys are not going to forget. Okay. So for now, in total, it's right now you're looking at 7,000, 1,000, no, no, wow, 7,000, <laughs> $1,731 with 40 cents. All right. That is for August 28th through September 1st for two adults, two children, three day park tickets for that amount. So now if your client was looking at 5K or 10K for four people, I don't know if you guys have seen, they're like 4K for 10 people. Oh my God. Look at how much it is. It's because they're not going with the affordable, the cheap stuff, okay? And the reason you want to also give them that say cheap, right? You want to go ahead and let them know the reasons why behind it. Hey, did you know you can save up $300 with going with this one? And guess what? You guys are able to go ahead and do more experience. You can do more souvenirs. You can go towards more to, towards the food, especially, right? Because food is expensive there. Um, you can add them a memory maker. This is about $200 added to it if they decide to do this. So anytime that you guys are able to see Disney, right? If you see the photographers, especially like as, as soon as you walk in, you see like a photographer right there for the magic, for the, uh, <laughs> sorry, magic kingdom, right? Um, or with the characters or maybe on the rides, those will be included with the memory maker. Okay. Those are $200 added on today. So you just guys have to add that memory maker if you want to go ahead and let them know, but you have to go ahead and let them know if they decide to put it on there. Okay, that's if you end up, you know, if this is an actual booking. But for the mock booking itself, you guys are able to see right there that it's that amount of money. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you really quick my mock bookings. For meanwhile, for those that have done mock bookings, all right, when you guys do your mock bookings, let, tell me, there's two ways you guys do it. Do you guys use a flyer or do you guys do like the whole information and then put a picture? 
like written out. How do you guys do your mock bookings? Do you guys use a flyer or do you put the information in the picture? Uh, Josh says info and pictures. Okay. Adriana says flyer. Haven't done one yet. Okay. Information and picture. Okay. Information and picture. Okay. For those that are putting information in picture, <laughs> never haven't done one. Okay. That's fine. All right. Because I know there's a lot of newbies on here. For those that have done information and picture, guys, let me know right now in the chat. Just in general, when you guys go on your Facebooks, right? On Facebook, I don't, I don't, I don't use Instagram that, 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 so I don't know. But on Facebook, when you guys see like a story or you see like, like what, two, three more sentences and you see the more, do you guys click on it to read more about that stuff? Yes or no? Put it in the chat box. Do you guys click on it to read more information? If the beginning is interesting to me, yes, no, it depends if it catches my attention. Okay, the majority, if you go ahead and cross through it, are you gonna like stop? No, okay, the majority of says no, okay. Sometimes, I usually do. Wow, you guys are, I should have you guys with my, <laughs> my Facebook. <laughs> definitely not, Katie says definitely, I, I don't either. Don't worry, I don't either, <laughs> in big words, no. Don't, don't, okay. Now, the reason I say this, guys, is because you guys have to put yourself, yes, it looks cool and nice in um, the perspective of a business person, right? But as a consumer, I already as a consumer, I wouldn't unless I'm already thinking of a trip. There you go, all right? As a consumer, you have to think about, am I gonna click on that and have more information off of it? Like, am I gonna waste those two, three seconds to go ahead and click that button, right? You have to see it in both ways. Now on mine, here's mine. What catches your eye right here? Tell me, what catches your eye right here? The 200, uh-huh. The e-phone? What's an e-phone? Oh, the phone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, two adults, two children. Okay. All right. So. If you see my flyer, the fireworks, colors and graphics, exactly. If you guys see my flyer or you see a picture of Disney and like a whole bunch of information, which one are you guys gonna go ahead and, and do or look into? Are you guys gonna look into, ooh, let me see more information as what, with the flyer or are you gonna do the one that has the, the whole information with a picture? This one. Yes, thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> exactly. You want your clients when they're scrolling to stop and be like, whoa, what is that? Right? The picture, the flyer grabs more attention because it's giving you the basic information. All right. Like you right now, if I'm just like looking slightly somewhere else, the little $200 is like, like going at it. Right. And I'm keeping it simple. Yes, Stephanie, keep it simple. You do not want to go ahead and let them know, hey, if I open the drapes, I'm going to see the castle and Cinderella is going to be waving at me. Like, if I go outside, I'm going to touch the sand. Like, yes, that's cool and everything. Like, yes. But people don't need to know that. Right? People don't. Hi, Erica. Yes? When, when does a pre-authorization form, when is that needed? I will go over that in just a little bit. You're ahead of me right now. <laughs> All right, I'll go over that in just a little bit. Um, um, yeah, so so yeah, I'll go answer that in a little bit. So the mock booking part, you guys wanna go ahead and make sure you, you guys go ahead and grab something that grabs your attention, okay? And this from here, that's when you guys are gonna go ahead and do that booking, all right? Because remember, you're trying to get that people to come in and stop and look at your flyer to go ahead and re reach out to you and be like, hey, I want to go ahead and I'm interested in doing Disney. I guarantee you, like I have not within my five years, four years, going on five, that I've been here. Have I gotten somebody that tells me I want that exact same thing? I want that. I want to go August 28th from September 1st. It's for two adults, two children. I want that. Never have I gotten that. On the contrary, they reach out and they give me their dates. Of course, they give me their ages of their children. And of course, the price is going to change, right? Or the number of adults, because maybe one of them is 18 or 19, right? So it's never. It's rare, I'm not gonna say never, personally, I have never, but I don't know. Have I gotten something like this? 
Okay. And you guys want to make it as simple as possible too. Boom. Here are $200 when they're going two adults, two children. I'm not putting the ages of the children either. Okay. I don't need them to know that it's a, an infant that I'm charging, right? Just two adults, two children. You want to always go ahead and put starting at, okay? Because if you go ahead and post this and then three months from now, somebody reaches out and they're like, oh, I want to go ahead and do that. More than likely the price went up, right? Because no, the all stores are usually the first ones to go, right? So it might not be that. Plus they might, they want to go during, I don't know, Christmas or during spring break when it's much more expensive, right? Um, you're going to put the, the amounts that it came out to be. Uh, I put three day park tickets, hotel stay, right? I do not do the, the flights. Uh, Disney itself does not include the flights. I put my link tree, because remember, I do promote my link tree a lot. I put payment plans available, and then I put contact me today. That's all I do, right? That's all I do, okay? Now, this is just for the mock booking part, okay? You get to see how much you get commissioned off of here too, guys, okay? Remember, that's where you guys are able to find that. Next to it, you guys are able to compare vacation offers as well. This is like a little hidden thing that a lot of people didn't know about, right? You guys are able to go ahead and compare back to back different dates. Let's just say the client is interested in going maybe during Christmas and or maybe this time frame, right? If they want to go during Christmas, for you guys not to go ahead and go all the way out because you don't want to write this all this information up, right? You guys are able to go ahead and click the compare vacation offers and you guys are able to go ahead and um, see that uh, right here. Okay. Now you have up to three, two more offers. You guys are able to go ahead and go back to back. There's two ways you guys are able to use this information. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and go over the first one, which is going back to back on different dates. So if this client wants to go ahead and go, excuse me, during um, Christmas, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go and doing Christmas. I'm able to go ahead and see this back to back. 26, everything's the same. I'm the only thing I'm changing on here is just going to be the dates. All right, everything stays the same. Everything, the, the adults, the, the children, I don't have to even mess around with all of that, right? Of course, I'm gonna go ahead and go to low to high, okay? And look at that, they have the same resort, which is cool because sometimes they do not have the, that resort during that time frame, okay? So I'm able to go ahead and click on this. I'm able to go ahead and go through the process, right? And again, there's no sales going on. I want the standard room, right? because this client wants to go ahead and know the difference of these two prices. So instead of doing all, take getting this off and going and doing it all the way from the beginning, guess what guys, you're able to go ahead and compare back to back. Right here, you're able to see that one costs 1,700 and the other one costs 2,700. So it's a thousand dollar difference to go from one month to the other month, right? Now you can go ahead and let your client, while you're looking at this, you can let your client know, hey, the time frame that you want to go in August, it's 1,700. But if you want to go during Christmas, it's 2,700. And of course, more than likely, they'll go ahead and go with the cheapest one, right? So if they go ahead and go with the cheapest, you're just going to go ahead and click select. And then you just continue from there without even have to go in and going back and forth with anything. Pretty cool, right? Not only that, let's just say that um, they have their cousins that want to go with them, right? Because sometimes we have like a family of two or three or whatever, right? You guys are able to do the same thing too. We can go ahead and create the offer. And this is just to see the pricing, okay? Um, if they're going to go ahead and go to August, right? Because they're going to be a family. Let's just say it's their cousins. They're going at, in the same time frame. Um, theirs is maybe three adults and three children, right? Let's just say their children, I don't know, is one is nine, one is 15, and one is 17, okay? Let's just say that. All right, We're, then that's going to populate. And I'm still here without leaving. You see, that's the cool part about this, that I'm still able to go ahead and look at stuff without even able to leave. So on here, you see, I'm not able to go ahead and have the, the, the movies anymore. The only one I'm able to go ahead and have is the music. So if the person wants to go ahead and originally have, if she really wants to go ahead and do the movies, you have to let her know that, um, you're not able to go ahead and do that, all right? Um, because if they want to be with their cousins or their or you know their family, they it, it, they you they can't do the all star movies. So either they have to move to the all star music so they can be with them, right? But either way, you can go ahead and let them know, hey, for your cousin, for three people and three children, right? Three adults, three children. For them, it's three thousand six hundred and forty eight dollars. 
but to let you know that you guys will not be in the same resort because hers is going to be the all-star music and yours is the all-star movies. Did you want to make that change? Okay, does that make sense to you guys? And then, th so this is how you guys are able to use this, this, this um, tool for either or of those two options that I just went over with you. So like that, you guys are able to make changes if needed to. If it's more than this amount, right? Because I've had some times where it's like maybe, I don't know, five people um, and then like maybe three children. Um, there's no longer the all-stars. It has to be one of the other resorts, the moderate. And that means that they have to change into moderate, meaning that it's going to be more expensive for them. Okay. So um, there you guys are able to go ahead and see uh, while on there at the same time. Okay. But then at the end, if I just want to go ahead and do this, right? We want to go ahead and do this. We're going to go ahead and select this offer. The offer is going to stay the same. Once we go ahead and go in there, it's going to go ahead and give me that little block again, telling me that I have to reserve, right? Which I already know. All right. And this is just your mock booking right here. If it continues to go ahead and be the, if it's going to be a quote, all right. I mean, I'm sorry. If it's going to be the actual booking from here, you're just going to go ahead and go to checkout. This is the other step. Remember, there, it's just one step difference from a mock booking to a booking. By here, by when the time you tell them it's the 1,700 and they say yes, you should have already sent them the credit card authorization form. They should have already filled it out and you should already have it so like that you can go ahead and start booking them, okay? So by you having the credit card authorization form, you already have their information as well, all right? Now, here's where the payment plans come in also uh, if they decide to do the payment plans. The payment plans are through you. They're not through Disney. Disney only cares that they get paid the amount 30 days before they arrive. That's all that Disney cares. Disney doesn't care if they pay a dollar a day, if they pay $100 a day, if they pay 50 cents a day, they do not care as long as they get paid 30 days before their, arri their arrival date. Okay, with that being said, on the side, guys, you will see when the due date is. Due date is July 29th. Right. Uh, and the whole, and it's always going to give you the total because they do not know if a client's going to leave two to 200, 500, a thousand, whatever it is. They do not know. So that's why they go ahead and tell you the full amount. All right. So the thing with this, guys, is that if you guys tell them it's not until July 29th that you can go ahead and, and, and give me the amount. They're going to wait until the 29th, or if you're calling them the 29th to get the last payment, they're probably going to come up with some excuse of either something happened and they don't have the funds. And guess what? That means you're going to be on the phone with Disney trying to figure out what can we do, right? Because after the 30 days, they start deducting amount of money. Okay. Every time you say, I'm not sure the amount, I'm sorry, but they start taking away money. So if they decide to cancel, now they're not going to get their full amount. If it's prior to the 30 days, they will. If it's after the 30 days, they will not get their full amount. Okay, just an FYI. With that being said too, what I do is I go ahead and give myself an extra week before the 29th, right? So like that, they, you can help them out too at the same time. So if I go into, if I look at, um, what is it? July 29th, that's the due date. I give myself an extra day, which would an extra week, which would be July 22nd, which is a Saturday. I'm actually going to give myself the 21st, right? Which is a Friday. So I'm going to tell my client, they have until July 21st to make their final payment. I'm not going to say July 29th. All right. I'm going to say July 21st. Okay. Now from there, from that July 21st until let's just say it's today, right? You're booking the booking today. If you guys decide to do a payment plan, what you guys are going to do at this point is the total amount, you're going to do the total amount, right? Which is, hold on. and thirty one. So the total is $1,731, right? If they're giving the down payment of $200 today, that means it's going to be $1,531 with 40 cents, right? So it's February, we're doing March, April, May, June, July, that's five months. So what you're going to do is you're going to divide the remaining balance, the $1,531 into five months, okay? Divided into five months. That's if they want to pay once a month. 
right? If they want to do once a month, that means they're going to have to pay $306 a month. If they want to go ahead and go twice a week, right? Bi-weekly or weekly, then that's when you start doing those numbers. But for now, I'm doing it the simplest one, which is the five weeks because it's five months from now. So they're going to have to pay $306 for you. So you guys have to set a date and time. So like that, you can go ahead and remove that amount of money. So if it's going to be every third of the of a Friday at five o'clock that you're going to call them, go ahead and make sure you do that. Do not just automatically take it out and be like, well, they know about it because people forget. All right. And they might look at it and be like, oh, look, there's extra money in there. They go and waste it. And then you go in there and be like, oh, let me go ahead and remove it. And now they're overdrawn. Do you think they're going to be happy? All right. So always make sure when you're doing a payment plan, because this is through you, this is not through them. Okay. If you guys decide to put it in writing or whatever, that's perfectly fine. But you have to go ahead and make sure to maybe get set up a date and time to go ahead and call them to make sure it's okay to pull that amount of money. So you guys, all of you are, are in the same um, page. All right. That's very, very important because you don't want to go in there do that payment and then them not forget because they had a house pay, they have to do something or you removed it and they have to make like a, a, an important expense, right? And then they can't do it anymore. So you have to make sure you do that, all right? If it's the same card, you don't need different credit card authorization forms if it's the same card, all right? Um, we're gonna go ahead and put the information of everybody on here, regardless if they're one day old or they're 50, 500 years old, you're gonna to have to have that information on here. I will tell you the ages and um, on here. So it says like the, the two-year-old goes on here, the four-year-old goes on here, the 18 and the 18-year-old goes on here, okay? You'll have this information as well because you're already going and calling the, the person on here because by the time you're doing the credit card numbers, remember, because the card is asking you for the last four digits on the credit card authorization form right? It's not asking you for the full amount. So in order to get the full amount, you need to get on the phone with the client and ask them, hey, I got your credit card authorization form. Once you completed all of this, because we want to make sure all of this is completed, right? Um, get on the phone with them and be like, okay, just want to make sure, can you go ahead and give me the 19, is it 16 or 19? I forgot. The whole amount of numbers in the card, please. And you can go ahead and write it down in the credit card authorization form, because you're going to print it out, right? And like that, you have that information to go ahead and do this. You, this is done manually. This is not done automatically, guys, okay? This is done manually. Every time you have to go in here and do the payment yourself for them. It's not done automatically, okay? Same thing with VAX vacations that they do this. You guys are able to offer payment plans too, okay? On here, for the payment, if they're gonna do $200, that's perfectly fine. They can give the full payment. They can do another amount. If you go ahead and do other amounts, that means it has to be greater than the $200. So if they're gonna give 300 or 500, that's where you guys are able to do this. Now, we are able to hold this reservation for three days. That's the that's one difference that a regular person, if they go ahead and, and look for this, they're not able to hold it for three days. We are able to hold it for three days for them. Okay, so if they're like, well, I'm not sure, I need to speak with my spouse. Hey, that's perfectly fine. I can hold this for you, right? Um, and then if you decide maybe tomorrow or the next day that you wanna go ahead and do this, we can go ahead and do this. Because like that, you will not lose this this room it's like if it's reserved but it's on hold all right so you can let them know that sometimes they do they that's how you can scratch, catch some people too okay um by you holding this for three days now after the three days if you do not have a payment this disney is going to release it out and you no longer have this option available so that means if like next week or in three months from now they're like okay i'm ready let's do the 1700 well guess what no we can't Okay, because now it's probably more than the 1,700, right? You no longer, we only held it for three days, even though it gives you a reservation number because you will get a reservation number out of it, right? Because you have to make the payment. Um, that does not mean that they will hold that after three days, it will not be held anymore. So it's very, very important for you guys to let the client know that, right? If it's with, otherwise than that, when it's the hold for three days, you guys are able, you guys don't need the credit card information. All right, you see, it goes away. When you guys go ahead and if you hold it for three days, make sure the email is your email. All right, make sure it's your email, not the client's email, because sometimes they might forget or they might erase it or they might go into spam and they forget. If they do that, then guess who's going to be on the phone calling Disney? It's not going to be them. It's going to be you. All right. And for those who have tried calling Disney, 
you know, it take, it's been taking a long time lately where it's like two or three hours to get a hold of somebody. So unless you want to be on the phone <laughs> that you really, really love the music, um, you guys are going to be there for a long time. So just make sure to send it to yourself. And then if they lose it or they, they can't find it, guess what? You can forward it to them because you already have it. All right. That's, that's for the, um, the hold. When they're giving the payment, of course, it opens up the access for the credit card information. And that's where, you, by, by here, you're supposed to be on the phone with the client for, to put in the credit card information, right? They're also able to go ahead and pay with the Disney gift cards. All right, guys, if you know your client has a lot of gift cards, you can go ahead and let them know, hey, you can go to DisneyGiftCards.com and combine them together, okay? I think the maximum is $1,000 you can have per card, too. So if they have like little fives and tens and 25s, they can gather all of them and put it into one. Um, and then at the end of the day, they can have maybe like three or four big, big amounts of, of cards on there instead of having like a whole bunch of little cards. And all you need is like just the, the account number that the card has to go ahead and make the payments. So yes, those ones that you get at Walmart, that you go ahead and get at Sam's, at Costco, at um, you know, any of those, um, depending on the, whatever store, you know, you guys have, you guys are able, they are able to go ahead and use this as, payments as well. All right. Once you're done with this at the end, you will go ahead and get click purchase. When you click purchase, you're going to be able to go ahead and get a credit card. I mean, I'm sorry, you're going to get an, uh, a confirmation number, regardless if you put it on hold, or if you're making the $2, the $200 payment, you're going to get a reservation number. Okay. When let's just say it's been a month and you're going to go ahead and do a, 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 a payment. All right. The, the way you guys go ahead and go on this is you're going to go ahead and come in and where it says reservation, which is under what we went through right here, that's where you're going to put their, their number and it's going to pull up their information. And then you, what we just ended up doing right now, they just have to fill, you just have to fill that out, fill in the information for the credit card and that's it. Okay. So let me go into on here because I know there was several questions. Um, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Correction, you can reserve before booking. How would you go about sending the quotes amount for whether they choose to go forward with booking? The quote is up to you guys how you want to go ahead and do it. I actually have my quick quotes, which I actually do as well through my Canva. Um, mine is through my email. For those that end up filling out my, my form, my job form, right? I go ahead and go a little bit extra and I make it looking like this. So um, the reason I do this too is because um, I go ahead and put the quote when I gave the quote for them, right? Because just in case they come back like four months from now and they're like, yes, I want it after all. Well, instead of me searching when I actually send this and all instead of doing more of than work than I'm supposed to, I can automatically see, I gave this person this January, right? And that they're coming to me in June. Yeah, no, more than likely this price is not the same, right? I usually go ahead and make it a little bit more personal with their name. Um, I call this my quick quote. Reason being is because it usually takes me about five, 10 minutes and I can have a quote for them easy, okay? Um, I have like a nice Disney picture on here. I put my, my logo on here. Here, I know with my mock bookings, right? I tell you, keep it simple. Right. But once it's the booking, I put more information on here. OK, it's not for the client. It's for me, because if this client comes back and tells me, yes, after all, well, guess what? I already know what what I gave them. Right. It was the all star sports. I already know when they're going. I already know the ages of the child, because if I only have this two adults, two children for me to be like, oh, what, well, how old were the children again? That doesn't sound professional. Right. So by me just going a little bit extra and adding this information in there, it's going to help me, not them. Does that make sense? Um, starting at $2,000, deposit is $200. The, this includes only, only because I have to tell them because flights is not included, um, hotel and tickets. The remaining balance is due August 5th. Again, I'm, give, I'm, I'm removing that extra week, okay? I'm making it that extra week because I want to have that safety net for myself. Um, please be advised if payment plan has a payment down payment has not been given, which is the $200 prices are subject to change and payment plans are available. Meaning if I speak to them or they get this on the sixth, seventh or eighth, and they have not given me their $200. I'm not guaranteeing them that this price will stay the same. So I'm covering my book. Okay. This is how I do my quotes, my itineraries, I guess. 
Okay, I apologize why if I kick me out. Okay, it's a quick quote for a client requesting a book. Yes. Okay, that's how I do it. Of course, you guys are able to do it however you guys wish to do it. Um, if you guys want to go in more into like Google Doc and make them all pretty nice. But I, again, this is like, it's quick quote. Says it in the name. <laughs> it's quick. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> okay, guys. So um, that's it for the Disney. How to go ahead and do the mock booking all the way even into an actual booking itself. You want to make sure also you have all this information correctly done. Make sure you have the, you know, the credit card authorization form done as well. Have this information included. So like that, you're not asking your clients always all the time you know, this, this, and this, because you have the information on here as well. Um, also, I uh, forgot to tell you guys, with, with adding that extra week advance, what you guys are able to do is if that Friday, right, that let's just say it's that Friday, the, the, the actual, not the 29th, where is it? July 21st, right? Because I gave myself that extra week. Because if that 21st, you call them and to make that payment and they're like, oh, no, I can't make it today. Can you give me extra days? Instead of you guys calling Disney, right? Because we don't want to call Disney and be on hold. I don't know about you, but I don't. Um, instead of calling and letting them know, don't tell them, oh, no, that's cool. You have until next week, right? You don't want to tell them that, right? What you want to go ahead and do is you want to be like, okay, let me see what I can go ahead and do. You're giving yourself some time. Okay, wait an hour or so, right? Because you don't want to just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give them a little bit of that, a little anxious. And then call them back and be like, well, I'm able to go ahead and do the 24th on Monday. Does that work out for you? More than likely, they'll probably say yes, right? Because you're giving them some extra days on there. But you're still in that time frame of doing it the 29th. Does that make sense? So that's where, you know, you didn't have to do anything, but you don't want to make it easy for them either because they'll be like, well, if I have until the 28th or the 29th, why are you telling me to pay right now? All right. Um, I will, if there's any other questions, I will go ahead and answer them once the recording is done. But um, as of right now, this should be it for you guys. Um, thank you very much for joining me. Make sure you guys go ahead and um, subscribe to my YouTube to go ahead and get any updates or any new trainings I do have, which is Erica for Travel on YouTube. Thank you for joining me today, guys. And I will go ahead and see you next time in my next trainings. Bye.